This screencast covers material from the practice set of Module 4, Lesson 8, where we relate fraction of a set to repeated addition and uh, fraction multiplication. In this set of problems, they tell us to rewrite the addition expressions as fractions, as shown in the example. If we look at the example, we see we have 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds. Four times, we're adding it four times, which is the same as 4 times 2 over 3 equals 8 thirds. Let's run through some examples quickly. So we have 7 fourths plus 7 fourths plus 7 fourths. We will write 3 times 7 over 4. That equals 21 fourths. Now in the example they didn't uh, convert this to a uh, mixed number. You could if you'd liked. And that would be 5 and 1 fourth. Let's do another example. We have 14 fifths plus 14 fifths. That's 2 times 14 over 5, which equals 28 fifths. And again, we can convert that to a mixed number if we like. One last example here, very quickly. We have 4 sevenths plus 4 sevenths plus 4 sevenths. That's 3 times 4 divided by 7 equals 12 sevenths. And finally, once again, we can convert that into a mixed number. This time we'll do it. That's 1 and 5 sevenths. Now we have a couple problems in which the uh, factors are reversed using the commutative property. We should be able to get the same answer. We're asked to model this this time, though. So we have 1 half times 8. In this case, we're going to Make a tape diagram. The whole is 8. And we're going to partition it to two parts because we have 1 half, the denominator is 2, and I get the answer of 4. In this other one, we're going to use a repeated addition to represent the problem. So I have 1 half 8 times. And each one of these will represent one half. We then want to know the whole. And we find that the answer is, well, we have one half plus one half plus one half. That would be um, one half times eight, or I'll reverse that to be consistent with the previous problems. That's eight times 1 over 2 equals 8 halves, which equals 4. In each case, we get 4. We'll do another example for you. This one, we have 3 fifths times 10. So we'll take our whole, once again, is 10. And then we're going to partition it into 5 equal parts. We'll bracket three of those. If we take a look at this, each one of these is worth two. So uh, in the thinking we've talked about in the other uh, lessons is we had five units equals 10, one unit equals two, three units equals six. So the answer is six. In this case, we have repeated addition. We're going to have to make 10 equal parts. And each of them will have 3 fifths in it. And it gets a little tedious here, but uh, bear with me. And I'll just very quickly and sloppily write 3 fifths. So that would be the same as 10 times 3 over 5 equals 30 fifths, and 30 divided by 5 equals 6. Either way, we get 6. In the homework, they ask us to do this two different ways. In the practice set, they have you do it uh, in a, a, another way as well, and I'll explain that in a moment. First of all, uh, we'll do it uh, by the first method they talk about us applying in the homework. So that would be 14 times 3 sevenths equals 14 times 3 over 7. 
The first way they have us do this for the homework is to multiply 14 times 3, and we get 42. And that's divided by 7. We get a 6. Now, this, uh, one of the ways they have us do it in the practice set, this first one was uh, for the homework, is to take our 14 and 3, uh, 14 times 3 sevenths and do the following. So we'll pick a different color here. So I have 14 times 3 over 7 equals, we're going to decompose the first factor. So that's the same as 7 times 2 because 14 is the same as 7 times 2 times 3 over 7. And since we're multiplying by 7 and dividing by 7, you're essentially multiplying by 1. So we can simply now say that's the same as 2 times 3 over 1 equals 6. Now, yet another way they have us do it, and this one is in both the practice set and the homework, is kind of a shortcut for the method in red. So I'm going to put 14 times 3 over 7. We're going to divide both 14 and 7 by 7. We get a 2. This is a 1. And we get a 6 once again. So these are the two methods they ask us to do in the homework. Uh, this method in red kind of explains how the method in black works. And that's uh, the method, one of the techniques used in the practice set. We'll run through another example. So we have 3 fourths times 36. So I have 3 times 36 over 4. And now I multiply that, I get 108. You can see that this is a pretty big number. Not easy to work with. And most of us will have to probably divide that out. And we get a 27. Now we'll do the other technique. We'll try to do the one in red. We have 3 times 36 over 4. And I can decompose my 36, 3 times 9 times 4 over 4. Again, if we multiply by 4 and divide by 4, we're in essence uh, multiplying by 1. They kind of cancel each other out. And I get 3 times 9 is 27. To the third technique using the shortcut, we have 3 times 36 over 4. Both 36 and 4 are divisible by 4. This becomes 1, this becomes 9, and the answer is once again 27. I'll run through one more example. We have 9 eighths times 32. And we have 9 times 32 divided by 8, or over 8. And if we want to do this out, we can. You get 27 plus 18 is 2. 188 over 8. And then we can do the division. We'll do that out here. We have 288 divided by 8. That goes in 3 times. I get a 24. I get a 4. Bring down the 8. And I get a 6. So the answer is 36. You can see that... Uh, in some cases, uh, we work with some large numbers, and uh, using these other techniques, are, uh, we can do much more of this mentally. So we'll go on to 9 times 32 over 8, decompose the 32, 9 times 4 times 8, and again, we have the 8s canceling each other out, and we get 36. And finally, showing you the last method using the shorthand, which is very commonly used as you get into upper grades working with algebra. Again, both 32 and 8 are divisible by 8. We get a 1, we get a 4. 4 times 9 is 36. The last one we are going to do just simply relates these problems to time, and they say that you can use any technique that you like. So I'm just going to do this one way. So, 30, 3 fourths times 60. Uh, we're doing that because there's 60 seconds in, uh, or 60 minutes in every hour. So, in essence, we're using these skills to uh, convert 
units of uh, time in this case we're going from hours to minutes so since there are 60 minutes in each hour this will the answer to 3 fourths times 60 will yield the answer to how many minutes in 3 fourths of an hour so I have 3 times 60 over 4 and 4 goes into 60 15 times that becomes a 1 3 times 15 is 45 3 fourths of an hour is 45 minutes we can also apply this to the metric system and again the conversion factor between grams and kilograms is a thousand every gram is equal to a thousand every kilogram is equal to a thousand grams so we have 3 times 1000 over 10 and if I divide um, 1000 by 10 I get 100 and the answer is 3 times 100 divided by 1 is 300 so 3 tenths of a kilogram equals 300 grams.